Hi everyone, this is Fabi and in today's video we'll learn how to use bit masking and bit manipulation in order to write more efficient code faster. It's very important to master these early as working with embedded systems involves a lot of writing into registers and also a lot of reading out of registers and most of the time we only care about single bits out of these registers. Additionally, bitwise operations are almost guaranteed to come up in technical interviews for jobs in this field due to how often embedded engineers use these in their day-to-day -day work. Also, from the interviews I've had with fresh graduates, it seems like a lot of them struggle with these operations, so the aim of this video is to teach these bit operations in this very intuitive way. If you guys are new around here, this video is part of an educational series I'm doing on my channel called Embedded Systems Explained, and the aim of this series is to teach you embedded systems in a simple to understand manner and with examples so that you know how to use these in the real world. If you want to check out the other videos, there's going to be a link to the playlist in the pinned comment down below. First off, it's important to understand what bit manipulation and bit masking actually mean. Both of these are bit operations which help us more easily work with bits out of registers, for example. The main bit manipulation operators you need to know about in order to get started are AND, OR, and NOT, which we will talk about in this video, and then in part 2 we will talk about exclusive OR, or XOR, and LEFT and right shifting of bits. Bit masking refers to using a mask, hence the name, to extract just the useful information from a register, so let's say just a bit for example. But why do we need these? Well, in order to write embedded code, you're going to write code that is very close to your hardware, which is going to mean that you have to set a lot of registers and also to read the value of registers. The problem with this is that when we are reading a register's value, we don't actually care about all of the bits inside the register, which there's going to be at least 8 of. We usually just care about one of those bits. Same when we write back to a register. We don't usually want to write all of the bits at once, just one of them. Let's hear a quick message from today's sponsor and then we'll discuss about each operator and when they are useful. Today's sponsor, PCBWay, is a leading provider of high quality PCB manufacturing and assembly services. The pricing is also extremely competitive and furthermore, if you have an idea for a new project or already have everything developed, PCBWay offers complete manufacturing services from producing PCBs, buying the necessary parts, assembling the PCBs, CNC machining, even 3D printing or injection molding, all the way to final assembly. No matter how complex your project is, PCB Way has got you covered. Click the link in the description to order your PCBs today at a very good price and with fast shipping and also to check out their new services which will allow you to create your own project from the ground up. Before jumping in, you'll hear me talk about things like bit 0, bit 1, etc. You should think about these as constants which are already defined in your code and basically they only have one bit set to 1 and the rest are set to 0. So in our case, bit 0 would be 1, bit 1 would be 2, etc. Additionally, I will mention multiple times that we are going to read something from a register or write something to a register, but you should know you can do the same thing with the variable you just declared. So it's not just working with registers, you can use these operators to also work with the variables that you declared. Okay, so let's start off with reading bits from registers. In order to extract just one bit out of a register, we have to use a bit mask and the end operator in order to get just the bit we care about. Firstly, using the end operator, we can control which bits out of the register we will read and which of them we will ignore. If we end with the one, the value of that bit will get copied over and if we end another bit with zero, the value of that bit won't get copied over. Our mask is simply going to have one bit B1, which is going to be the bit we actually want to read from the register. Let's say we want to copy the value of bit 4 of a register in one of our variables which is named button state. 
We do this by writing button state equals B1 in and bit 4, which is the mask in our case. Doing this, only bit 4 will get copied over from the P1 in register. If you want to verify the value of the extracted bit, all you have to do is insert it in an if and you don't have to compare it with anything, because if the bit is set, the condition will be true, otherwise it will be false. Do make sure to like the video if you are finding it helpful, subscribe and hit the bell icon. All of these things are helping me out tremendously on YouTube, so I want to thank you. If we want to set a bit to the value of 1 in a register, we use the OR operator like you see on the screen right now. The reason for this is because the OR operator allows us to set just a bit slash bits we want, leaving all the others unchanged. If we were to just attribute a value to this register, like writing b one dir equals bit 2, essentially what we would do is to erase all of the bits of that register and then setting just our bit to b one. Avoid attributing a value to a register like this unless you are configuring a peripheral from scratch and you want to start off clean. If this is not what you are doing and you just want to set a bit to be 1, use OR equals and you will accomplish just that. If we want to set a bit of a register to be 0, this will involve the AND operator, NOT operator and a bit mask. So let's see why we need to do so many things just to set a bit to be zero. Firstly, using the end operator, we can control which of the bits of the register will remain unchanged and which of them will be set to zero. If we end with the one, the value of the bit will remain unchanged and if we end with the zero, the value of the bit will be set to zero regardless of its previous state. Therefore, we will want to make sure that our bit mask will have a zero at the position where we want to write a zero in the register. How do we do this easily through code? Well, we write a bit mask, of course. So let's say we want to set bit 3 to be zero, and if our bit mask were just bit 3, and we were to end this mask with our register, the result would be that all of the bits of the register would be set to zero, apart from the bit we actually wanted to set to zero. This obviously wasn't what we wanted, so the mask is incorrect. What we actually still need to do is to negate the mask using the NOT operator. This makes it so that all of the bits that were previously zero will now be one, and the bit which was previously one will now be a zero. Now our mask is correct, as it has all of its positions set to 1, apart from the position which corresponds to the position where we want to set a 0 in the register. We can actually do all of this with the one-liner, creating our mask and ending it with the register in order to set the value of the bit we want to 0. Just like in the previous case, simply attributing the value of 0 to a register if we want to set just one bit to 0 is not the proper way of doing this as it also sets all the other bits of the register to zero. This is generally just not safe as it will lead to unwanted behavior, especially if you don't know what the other bits of the register do. Additionally, it's important to know that we can read or write multiple bits from or to a register at a time. All we need to do is to OR the bits we want to read slash write together. When creating a negated bit mask, it's important to use parentheses so that we make sure that the OR operation happens first and the NOT operation only afterwards. Anyways, I hope you guys found this video useful. As I already mentioned, we will talk about XOR, left and right shifting, in a second part of this video, which will come out later. In the description of the video, you will find a link to today's sponsor PCBWay and also a link to buy the MSP430 Launchpad, which I think is an essential tool to start you into the embedded world. Stay tuned, I'll catch up with you in the next video.